Golden Retriever puppies might be the cutest animals in the world, but they're certainly not the easiest to raise. It's hard being a Golden Retriever puppy parent, and there's probably no harder phase than the teething phase, when they're extra bitey and chewing on everything. Most people stumble through this phase, coming out on the other side with a few scars on their hands and teeth marks on their furniture. But there are some things you can do to make life a lot easier with a teething Golden Retriever puppy. And then there are even some things that many people do that are actually making it harder for them and their puppy. Teething starts when your puppy is around three to four months old. And the most obvious sign that they're in the teething phase is that you find their little baby teeth on the floor. Here are a few of the teeth that we found from our golden retriever, Oliver, when he was between four and five months old. Many puppies swallow their teeth, so you may not find them laying on the floor, but you can gently lift their lip and check for any missing baby teeth. Most golden retriever puppies stop teething at six or seven months old, and although teething only lasts a few months, it can feel like an eternity. So here are five tips to help you survive the puppy teething phase. The first is to ensure your teething puppy gets enough sleep. The only thing worse than a teething puppy is an overly tired teething puppy. When your puppy is overly tired, they can become even more bitey and wild, and sometimes even throw a temper tantrum. Golden Retriever puppies need about 18 hours of sleep and rest every day to ensure they are developing properly, both physically and mentally. Typically, once a puppy has been awake and active for an hour or two, they are ready for a little snooze. Putting them in a crate or a pen or behind a baby gate with their favorite chew toy or a frozen Kong is the best way to help them settle down for sleep. And speaking of chew toys, that brings us to the next tip. Give your puppy safe, dog-friendly options to bite and chew. Teething puppies are very good at finding outlets for chewing that we don't want them to chew, such as our shoes, rugs, and furniture. You can prevent them from chewing on these items by giving your puppy tons of dog-friendly options that are enticing and soothing for their sore gums. And you can do yourself and your puppy a favor by leaving out a few chew toys on the floor. This way, they can easily access one whenever they feel the need to get their chew on. Some of our favorite chew toys for Golden Retriever puppies are Bully Sticks, Frozen Kongs, this Crunch Core Bone, Tuffy Stuffed Toys, and even Whole Carrots. And here's a little bonus tip. You can freeze the toys of the carrot to help soothe your puppy's hot, painful gums. I'll drop links for these toys down in the description for you, and be careful to supervise your puppy when they're chewing on these toys. This next tip will save your fingers and your furniture, but first, a quick little history lesson to help you understand why Golden Retriever puppies are the worst biters and hopefully give you a little extra patience with them. Golden Retrievers were bred to retrieve birds in their mouths for hunters over 150 years ago. So really, we've been training them to put things in their mouths this whole time. When they're a little puppy biting you with their dagger-like teeth, they're only doing what us humans have trained them to do. Plus, it's natural for all puppies to bite a lot. It's totally normal, and they're not trying to be mean, so don't be surprised when your golden retriever puppy is extra mouthy. That doesn't mean you should just take it, though. Which brings us to our next tip. If your puppy is biting you or something that you don't want them to bite, redirect them to something they're allowed to bite or chew. I love getting down on the floor and playing with my puppy, but I always come armed with a fun toy that he can sink his teeth into if he decides that he would rather bite me than play with me. And if they're chewing on your couch or shoes, redirecting them to a fun chew toy will save your belongings. If they're struggling to stop chewing your stuff, putting a little peanut butter on the chew toy will help the toy become more enticing than your smelly shoes. If you keep redirecting your puppy to toys that you want them to chew, make sure those toys are extra fun for them to chew and praise them for chewing on them, then your puppy will start to learn what they can and can't chew in your house. Another helpful tip is to keep a lightweight leash clipped to your puppy's collar or harness around the house. This is called a drag leash and allows you to easily and gently guide your puppy away from chewing something they're not supposed to and towards something more appropriate. If you go to grab your puppy and interrupt them when they're biting or chewing something without a drag leash on, then they'll likely dodge you or run away and create an annoying habit of catch me if you can. The drag leash gives you a way to gain control of the situation without having to grab or chase your puppy. And a drag leash is just one part of this next tip. 
use smart puppy management to control your puppy's biting and chewing. Let's be honest, sometimes redirecting your puppy just doesn't work. They persistently want to nip your hands and clothes no matter what amazing toys you show them. Or they keep going back to chomp that same corner of the coffee table despite your attempts to distract them with something else. This is where having good puppy management strategies comes into play. Puppy management is when you change the environment to make unwanted behavior unlikely or impossible. You can't always control your puppy, but you can control the environment to your advantage. Here's what I mean by this. You might put your puppy in a playpen where they can only chew on approved toys and chews. You might loop your puppy's leash around a table where they can only reach the delicious stuffed Kong and chew toys that you've set out for them. Or maybe you put your puppy behind a baby gate so that your pant leg is safe from their sharp little teeth. Puppy management is simple, but critical to surviving a teething golden retriever puppy. Your home and your sanity will thank you. I'll drop a link in the description to our favorite puppy management tools. And puppy management will help with this next tip. Remove yourself from the situation. Playing with a teething puppy can be tricky. They want to interact with you and play with you, but their mouths are sore and painful, and it can be hard for them to not nip or chomp on you. If you find redirection doesn't work, it's best to remove yourself from your puppy to show them that biting you simply ends the playtime. You can try walking away, though some puppies will get up and follow you and nip your ankles all through the house. This is where doing a little planning ahead makes a big difference. Try to only play with your puppy in a spot where you can get away from them. You might have a baby gate in the doorway, so if they start biting you, you can go to the other side of the baby gate. Or you might tether your puppy by their leash to a heavy table so that you can get up and walk away if the biting gets to be too much. Of course, you also need to provide them with lots of things they are allowed to chew if you're using this technique. Over time, your puppy will learn that biting makes you go away, and they'll get better at controlling their mouth. And here's another thing. You may not need to do this all the time. You might notice that in the mornings, they're sweet and not so bitey, so you don't need to worry too much about having an escape room. But maybe at night, your puppy is extra crazy and bitey, so you may want to only play with them when you have an escape room. These tips will help you survive the puppy teething phase. But many people make a big mistake when their puppy is teething that makes it hard for both them and their puppy. All the biting and chewing that comes from puppy teething can be really frustrating as a puppy owner. And while you might feel upset or annoyed in the moment, it's best to avoid punishing your puppy. Remember that nipping and chewing are normal parts of puppy development. Puppies have to use their mouths. It's a need, like food and water. Plus, humans have been breeding golden retrievers to use their mouths for 150 years, so it's in their genes. It really isn't humane to punish a baby animal for doing something that they need to do. Not to mention, Punishing a puppy can sometimes make the biting even more intense, and it can damage the trust between you and your puppy. And isn't having a strong bond with your pup the whole reason you got them in the first place? Here's what to avoid while your puppy is teething. Avoid hitting them, yelling at them, holding their mouth closed, spraying them with a water bottle, pinning your puppy onto their back, which is also called an alpha roll, or rolling their lips over their teeth. Some people recommend some of these punishment techniques, and they may work in the short term, but it's best to stick with the techniques we mentioned earlier when it comes to managing your puppy's teething phase. These strategies will help you minimize the frustration and pain that can come with puppy teething while allowing you to build a strong, positive bond with your pup. And speaking of things you shouldn't do when raising your puppy, see what my biggest regret in raising my first golden retriever puppy was in this next video. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.